In this video, we're going to look at QStack options like Move When Dark, Mark Queues, and QStack Macros. So let's start off by looking at Move When Dark. The Move When Dark function is used on theatrical style queue timing playbacks or QStacks. Let's start by recording some queues. We're going to select our spots, locate them, and we're going to position them onto the back wall. We're going to put a color in red, and we're going to record that as our first queue. We're now going to clear the programmer and we're going to select our wash lights. We're going to locate them. We're going to go to position. We're going to tilt them forward and we're going to toggle on fan and spread them out like so. We turn off fan, then go to the beam window and we're just going to zoom out our wash lights and set them in yellow. And record that as a second cue on playback number one. Clear the programmer and now we're going to do something again with our spots. Locate the spots. Let's say a different color, this time magenta. And this time we're going to tilt the spots out into the audience again. So in the last queue with the spots there on the back wall, we're going to go odd even and we're going to turn half our spots one way and odd even again and the other half the other way. So I've got a bit of a cross look there. I'm going to toggle off odd even and all. And now I'm going to record that as my third queue on playback number one. Now I'm going to clear the programmer. I'm going to do something again with my wash lights. Locate the wash lights, this time in blue, and I'm going to position the wash lights on the back wall, but fanned in together like so there. Toggling off fan and recording as cue number four. Clear the programmer, double click my select button, and you can see the default is that this cue stack is a chase by default. I'm going to go up to the soft key at the top here and select Q timing, which puts it into your more theatrical style Q timing where you use your go button to step through your cues. So as I bring up the fader, you can see it stops in Q1. I have to press the go button to go to Q2, 3 and 4. Let's put in some basic fade times, a two second fade time between my cues. And you'll notice now I have a transition time between my cues, two seconds from Q1 to 2 and so on there. As I go from Q1 to 2, you'll see Wash lights come on, spots go off as expected. Now if I go to Q3, you'll see over two seconds, your wash lights go off, but you also saw the spots had to move from their previous queue to the new queue and change the color as well, which in a theatrical show wouldn't look very professional unless that was the intended look. You want, may want the lights to come on exactly where you need them in that particular queue or scene. And the same again, going to Q4, you saw those wash lights move into their next position. So the idea of move when dark is saying when a fixture is no longer used in a queue, so the spots were used in Q1, but not in Q2, so when they're no longer used, preload to where they're next used. So preload, when you go to Q2, preload the spots to where they're used in Q3, because they're not used in Q2. To do this, triple tap your select button, or triple tap on the playback legend, which takes you to the queue stack options window, go to advanced and you can toggle on move when dark here. Move when dark does exactly that. Now if I activate my playback, I'm going to open the queue stack window so you can see the queues here. And I'm going to go to queue number two. You'll see as expected, it will fade over two seconds, but you'll now see here it says MWD for three seconds and then says complete. What it's doing is it's now preloading any fixtures that have gone dark, which are my spots in this case, to where they're next used. So if I press play on playback number one, you can see on come the spots where they're next used. You can see it saying MWD again and now complete, which means the wash lights have now preloaded because they're not used in Q3, but they are in Q4. Press it and on come the wash lights there. Now move when dark is a global function. It says when any fixture goes dark, preload to where your next being used. Preload your position, color, and beam attributes. It doesn't affect intensity. You won't find the lights snap on even though they're on in the next queue. I'm gonna turn off Move When Dark globally in the queue stack options, and we're gonna talk about mark queues. Mark queues are useful where you might only want a preload to happen at a particular point in your queue stack. So you might want to see the movement otherwise or the color change. At one point though, you might want it to preload. So this is where you'd use what we call a mark queue. In my case, I'm gonna set my mark queue before Q3. I want my spots to preload before there, but I don't want the wash lights to ever preload or do the move when dark in this stack. To set my mark queue, I simply click on the queue I want to have it 
happened before, and I click Mark Q soft button at the top of the window. This is inserted a Q 2.1 between Qs 2 and 3. Notice that the halt is automatically set to no, so it's going to auto run, and it's also set our track flags. You don't need to worry too much about these at this point. It's also got a fade time which you can modify, which is the time it takes to transition when you run and get to that queue. I'm going to take this down to one second. I'm now going to run my playback, Q1 as expected, go to Q2, and you'll notice once Q2 has finished fading and executing over two seconds, it ran that mark queue. It hasn't stopped Q2 outputting because it's tracked it forward, but that mark queue has become a preload queue. It's now complete, so I can go to Q3 and on come my spots where they're next needed. Now just to prove to you that move when dark is off, as I go to queue number four, you see the wash lights preloading there. So the mark queue is doing the preload on a before or per queue basis only. The other thing we're going to look at here is queue stack macros. You'll notice a field to the right called macro, which is where you can enter your macro commands. You'll find in the magic queue manual a whole list of queue stack macro commands. And I've just saved that onto a layout here to show you some example commands. The commands are always a letter followed by a number typically. So if you look at the letter A is activate a playback, the letter R is release a playback, the letter T is activate a playback at 100%, U and release, and that's a whole list of different macros for varying different functions in the software. Let's just use the activate macro or activate a full macro, which is the letter T, and the release release the fader to zero macro, which is the letter U, and look at how these could be used. Now these are particularly useful if, to save you on programming. You might want a chase or an effect or something to run at particular points in your stack, but you don't want to have to record those into all of your queues. Or you might want separate control. You might want size or speed control of an effect. So in my example, I've got here my spots doing a circle on playback number 10. I might want, when I get to queue number two, which is my wash lights, if we step through to it, I want my, want my wash lights to do that, exactly that, but I want the spotlights to come on and start doing that effect, but I want separate controls still on the playback. Well, a QStack macro is ideal to do that. All I need to do is click in the macro box and then enter the letter that you saw in that list I had before. Don't expect you to memorize these letters, but you'll find the reference in the manual. T is the activate at full, bringing the fader up, and then followed by the playback number, T10. And I want to release that playback when I get into queue number four. So I'm going to enter U10, switch it off again. You'll now see as I run through this playback, and I get to queue number two, when I run it, you can see it's activated playback number 10. The spots are spinning in a circle. And when I get to queue number four, it's released it, it's switched it off. So that's the basics of using QStat macros in your show. The final video we've got next is on file management.